Okay, today's the 27th, so we've got four more days of the year left. And if the Lord tarries, we're going to enter into 2021 and say goodbye to 2020. And I know that's going to be a welcome goodbye, right? So we want to talk about abiding in Christ. What does that word abide mean? It means to where, where are we living? Are we living in Christ Jesus? Are we living and walking with Him? I don't know about you, but I want to do better in 2021 than I did in 2020. I want to abide in Him more and more, and I want to bear more fruit. I want to bear more fruit. So abiding in Christ in 2021 and bearing fruit, we're coming to the end of 2020. Thank goodness um, very much has changed in the last 12 months. I was walking around doing some Christmas shopping during this Christmas season and going into stores and everybody's wearing masks and things, and, and which is a good thing. We, we need to do that when we're out, when we're close to people. Um, but I was thinking a year ago, I wouldn't have imagined this. I would have never thought that this was going to be happening. How quickly things change, right? So this new year brings us a sense of hope. I know that uh, we've heard in the media that you know, it, it may get worse before it gets better. Well, I want to tell you, because the guide is our Bible, the Bible says it's going to be okay. He's going to give us the strength to get us, get us through it. We learned this morning in our Sunday school class that God is a great God, and He's mindful of His people. He knows us. He knows right where we're at. And there's nothing in this world that we can put our trust in except for Him that's going to get us through days like these. So let's talk about abiding in Christ in the new year and bearing fruit. As we approach the new year, we, we often look to ourselves and we make commitments or resolutions uh, for what we consider to be a better life. And I hope that one of your resolutions or, or commitments is to abide in the Lord more and more in this new year. To maybe change some habits, your study habits. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I decided I was going to try to read the Bible through every year. And so that's one of the habits that I changed. I, I'm trying to read more. And, uh, and, and as, that, as I do that, I, I'm blessed by the Word of God, right? And so this next year, I want us to start praying right now, Lord, direct me. What, what can I change in my habits, in my lifestyle, in my life, so that I can abide in you more? Think about that as I go through this message this morning. What can I change? What can I do to draw closer to God? One of those things is reading the Word of God, isn't it? Studying, praying more. That's one of the things I need to do more of is pray. Commune with God in prayer. That's so important that we do that. And so uh, I've got things that I'm working on. I want you to think about things that you can work on, how you can abide in Christ more and more in 2021 than you have in the past. And automatically, when you abide more in Christ, you're going to bear more fruit. It's important that we do that. So as we think about resolutions or commitments that we're going to make, we want to get rid of the old and put on the new. It reminds me of a lobster. Did you know a lobster molts? I've heard of birds molting, but did you know a lobster molts his shell? He has to. To grow, he has to molt. And what happens, he starts to outgrow his shell, and his shell cracks a little bit, and he, gets, he lays over on his side, and he flexes his muscles in his body, and he breaks out of that shell. But during that time, his, his, his new shell is a little soft, and he's very vulnerable during that time. But he has to do that in order to change, in order to grow. It's an ugly, and it's a messy process. In a sense, you and I are lobsters. Our growth in Christ requires us to get rid of the old the old hard protective shell that's hardened by the earth, but hardened by the world, right? And have a softened heart, a, a, a vulnerable heart, a heart that can be submissive to God. That's what we want. So let's, let's become lobsters. 
Let's recognize that we need to get rid of this old hard shell, that something needs to change in our lives. All the time, there's always something that can improve in our life, isn't there? Especially as it pertains to growing in Christ and abiding in Him. So that's our goal. Every year should be, I want to draw closer to you, God. What do I need to do? And it it takes discipline, doesn't it? We have to discipline ourselves. We have to grow up, if you will, in Christ. We have to grow. We have to become more responsible about doing what God has called us to do, to do His will. And that takes just growing up. (laughs) You know, my granddad asked me one time, I did something, I did or said something foolish. I was standing right out there. I was under that window, our kitchen window. I was standing right there. I remember where I was when he said it. I can't remember what foolish thing I did or what foolish thing I said, but he said, when are you going to grow up? And my granddad never, he never spanked me. This was, he, he never, hardly ever said a harsh word to me. But that one time, he said, when are you going to grow up? Wow, it kind of took me by surprise. But there are things that we need to grow up in. Even as adults, we haven't reached where we need to be yet. And so I want you to begin praying and seeking God. No matter if you're one of these young guys like Liam and Caius, or whether you're the eldest person in the group, we all can improve, can't we? So let's make that our goal. This goal can be realized by daily commitment to drawing close to God, abiding in Christ. How can I live closer to God? How can I abide in Christ? John 15, 1 through 8 tells us how the Lord spoke to his disciples and imparted this valuable instruction to them on the importance of abiding in him. John 15, 1 through 8. You've all heard it before, but I'm going to read it to you. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. He says, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gathered them and threw threw them into the fire and they burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So as followers of Christ, our goal this year should be to abide in Christ, to live in Christ. And that's every part of our life, isn't it? That's surrendering every part of our life to Him, whether it be our home life, our work life, our school life, our entertainment, what we do, what we look at, what we spend our time doing, that needs to be about Christ. That needs to, we need to include Him in that. And if we feel uncomfortable including Him in that activity, you know what? That activity probably needs to stop. <laughs> so let's abide in Him. Let's make that our goal. And I want to talk to you this morning about doing just that. Living the new year, abiding in Christ, and glorifying God by bearing fruit in your life. In Ephesians, Paul gives us some great advice as to how to accomplish this goal. How can I live in Christ? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. Cooper, as you put that up there, Cooper's going to put up the New Living Translation, and I want to read this to you. Look at it, what it says. It says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are His dear children. Now, again, we're talking about how are we going to abide in Christ. These are great instructions. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are His dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered Himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. 
Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of the world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey Him. Don't participate in, this, in the things people do, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of the light, for this light is within you. Excuse me, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine, determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. There's, is there two more verses? Yeah. So be careful. That is through 17. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days, but don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. 15 through 17 is really where I want to focus. This basically sums up the passage. The New Life translation of this verse says this, So be careful how you live. Live as men. Now, ladies, when, when the scripture says men, it's talking about mankind. It's not leaving you out. So live as people who were wise, not foolish. Make the best of your time. These are sinful days. Don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord wants you to do. So... Wonderful song that Eddie sang this morning goes right along because the Word of God is our guideline, isn't it? So when we look at the Word and we see what it tells us to do, we want to make this our guideline. Not only how we live our physical lives, but our spiritual lives. We want to make that our goal, to be brought closer to God in 2021. When we do that, when we make that our goal, we will truly abide in Christ. First thing we see here is that we are to live wisely. We have a game at the house. It's called wise or otherwise. Have you ever played that game? We need to have you over and play wise or otherwise. I love it. It's one of my favorite games. It has on the card, it has uh, sayings from different parts of the world, kind of like a proverb, wise saying. It's not scriptural, but it's different sayings like from China or countries all over the world. And it has a saying, and and you're supposed to guess what country it's from. Is that right? No, no, you're supposed to. It has an ending. You're supposed to make up an end. Anyway, it's called wise or otherwise. But that name, wise or otherwise... <laughs> I don't want to be the otherwise. I want to be wise. How do we live with wisdom? We find wisdom in strange places. Liam gave us a part of wisdom this morning. I asked a question at the end of our Sunday school class about idols. What are some examples of idols in our modern day? And Liam raised his hand and he said, Xbox. He's smart. He and Caius, two of the smartest kids I know. Xbox. Wise. You know, wisdom comes from kids, right? Out of the mouths of babes. There was another kid, he was 10 years old, and he said, never let a dog watch your food. There was a kid, he was 14, his name was Michael. He said, when your dad is mad and asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer him. 
That same 14-year-old said, never let your mom know her diet's not working. <laughs> Another kid, he was nine years old, he said, stay away from prunes. And then another guy, he was nine. He said, never hold a, du a dust buster and a cat at the same time. <laughs> Naomi, not this one, but an another Naomi, she was 15. And she said, if you want a kitten, start out by asking for a horse. And then Lauren, she was nine. She said, felt markers don't make good lipstick. And then a 10-year-old, Joel, he said, don't pick on your sister when she's holding a baseball bat. And then Eileen, who was age eight, she said, never try to baptize a cat. Kids like Liam, <laughs> don't get any ideas from me, Liam. I'm telling you, you'll end up all scratched up, buddy. But... These, this wisdom that comes from, from kids like Liam and, and all these kids that I named, this is good wisdom, right? Some never hear the word of God. So how can they be wise, right? They're going to be otherwise. <laughs> Paul writes today that we are to live wisely. That's what he was telling us in the scriptures. Let's live wisely. And we learned this morning that our God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. And so in his word, we can find wisdom. What is that wisdom? What is wisdom? It's the ability to discern what is right, what is true, what is lasting. Proverbs chapter 2 speaks of wisdom. We don't really have time to go there, but a lot of Proverbs, especially in those first uh, books in Proverbs, speaks of wisdom and the power of wisdom that comes from God. Paul says to live by what you know as truth. The world tells us today that there is no absolute truth. The world tells us that you can do what you want. Whatever you feel like doing is okay as long as it's good for you. <laughs> they say that there's no absolute truth. That everything is up to the individual. That's called relativism. If you define relativism, it is the concept that points of view have no absolute truth or validity. Having only relative, subjective value according to the differences in perception or consideration. Simply said, if it feels good and it's okay for you, in your own wisdom, if you want to call it that, it's okay. That's what relativism is. There's no absolute truth. Paul writes that fools believe there is no truth. I don't want to be a fool. So I want to go to God's word. I want his word to direct me in all that I do. I want to find true wisdom in, in 2021. I want to know what his will is. Not what Brian's will is. I want to know what his will is. Truths declare this, that there are morals that we should embrace. That's what the truth declares to us. There are morals. There are things we can do and things we cannot do. That's what the Word of God shows us. There are, the truth declares that there are lifestyles that we should reject. Truth declares that there is counsel that we should embrace and counsel that we should reject. There's a passage that says, by a multitude of counselors, people are, are made wise, right? And sometimes you get good counsel. Sometimes you get bad counsel. We have to be able to discern what's best. How do we discern that? By looking at the Word of God. Truth declares that there's counsel that we should embrace and should reject. Truth also declares there is more to life than what we experience now. Truth declares that there is more to life than what we experience now. That's how people get themselves in so much trouble. They want to live for the moment, right? This is going to make me feel so good. 
whatever it is, they, they think this is going to be all that I need. But truth says there's more to life than what you experience in the moment. And truth declares that there is hope for eternity. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And in Christ Jesus, we have hope for eternity. In Christ Jesus, we know that the sufferings, the pain, the problems that we face in this life are going to go away. And we're going to be glorified in Christ. So we are to live wisely in the new year. We're talking about abiding in Christ. And so the first thing we must realize is that there is truth and that the ultimate truth is in Christ Jesus and that He came to this earth as God Himself to become the payment for our sin. That's the first truth we have to acknowledge. That Jesus came to this earth. We've just celebrated His first advent, His coming to this earth and being born in a manger. Why did He come? So that He could die for yours and my sin. He made the payment for our sin. If we can grasp that truth, that's where all good truth begins. So if we're to live wisely in 2021, we need to realize that the writer of Proverbs verses 9-10 says, For the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Let me read that again. Proverbs 9.10 Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. So how can I abide in Christ in 2021? I can fear God. And that's not a a shaking in our shoes fear. That's a, a reverent fear. Realizing that He is a great and mighty God. In Hebrews chapter 10, but it tells us that it's, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's for people who are rejecting Christ. That's for people who don't know God. It is going to be a fearful time for them because God's judgment is going to come on those people. So we honor God. We reverence His, His, His power, His greatness. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. So that first step, acknowledging Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. And that knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. If we abide in Him in 2021, we will make good decisions. Think about it. How many decisions do you think you're going to make in 2021? Wow. You have to decide what color of socks to put on every day, right? I'm not necessarily telling you you need to pray about that, but you're going to make a lot of decisions. Some important, some critical, some that could determine the rest of your life, right? And then some not so important. But folks, if we put our faith in God and put our trust in Him, our knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. We'll make good decisions. We can't have knowledge and wisdom until we recognize the most fundamental truth about our world. And that truth is that this world, where we live, everything that we can see, even into the uttermost parts of the universe, that was created by God. The scripture tells us that only fools say there is no God. And that's what the world is telling us. Not only are they telling us to do whatever you want to do. If it feels good, do it. As long as it's okay with you, do it. Not only do they tell us that, but they tell us that there is no God. They say this world was created in a big bang Billions of years ago, and, and that we evolved to these, these human bodies that, that heal themselves, that can, can critically think, that can, that can do some amazing things, that all this just evolved out of a big bang and crawled out of a slime pit and began to change over billions of years. That's what the world says. They're fools because they're saying there is no God. Paul writes, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. In other words, always acknowledging that there's a God. He's right there with us and He can help us make the right decisions. If we do that, we're going to abide in Christ. We're going to produce a lot of fruit in 2021. 
Live in the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and follow His teachings. That's wisdom, isn't it? If we do that, we will surely live wiser this year. So, not only are we to live wisely, that's point number one. Point number two, we are also to live making the most of every opportunity this next year. Make the most of every opportunity. Verse 16 of our text says that. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Life is very, very short. These young people, when I was that age, I didn't realize how short life was. And in our text in Sunday school class this morning, in Isaiah chapter 40, it spoke of the grass and compared humanity to the grass of the field. That doesn't mean God doesn't care for us. Don't get me wrong. But he was just bringing out a contrast between how real it is that life is so short. And so we need to take advantage of every opportunity. Folks, the Lord could come in 2021. He could come. How many of you know lost people that don't know Christ? Raise your hand. <laughs> we all do, don't we? And if they don't come to the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ, that's a terrible thing, isn't it? So let's make 2021 a year where we take advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel message you know, the devil's working hard against this. Socially distancing is keeping us away from people. I'm not telling you that I want, I want to be careful. I want to be cautious and not expose people to any illness, right? But I want to be as close to people as I can be to share the gospel with them. Our lives have changed in 2020. I'm not coming in contact with as many people as I did in the previous years. We're isolated. And I think that's a trick of the enemy. Don't get me wrong, COVID is real. <laughs> but let's take, and, and what has it caused us to do? We're on Facebook today because of that. And we're having an impact on more people than we did before because of that. We're taking advantage of that opportunity. God is going to give us wisdom and knowledge. He's going to give us as individuals. How can you minister? You raised your hand a moment ago about people that you know that need Christ. Let's pray that God would give you wisdom and the opportunity to minister to them. Amen? Is that still working? Am I still coming through? Take advantage of every opportunity because life is short and we don't have that many opportunities. Psalm 39, 4 says, Show me, O Lord, my life's end, the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. That was Psalm uh, 39, verse 4. Show me, O Lord, my life's end, the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Psalm 90, verse 10 says, The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we have the strength, they quickly pass away and we fly away. So folks, our time is short. We must live with some urgency in 2021. Let's take advantage of the opportunity that God gives us to share the gospel with those around us. Be ready to share wisdom from the word of God with those around you. There are people that are looking and hungering for that wisdom. Paul was a good example of this. He made the most of his opportunities. He preached at the drop of a hat. If anybody would listen, he would share the gospel with them. He planted churches everywhere he went. When he left there, there was a new church started for the continuation of the faith. You never know when you share a word of, the word of God with somebody. Maybe it's just as simple as John 3.16. When you share that with them, what, what seed you're planting and what might grow out of that. So take advantage of every opportunity. Paul did. 
He was constantly concerned for the welfare of others. So let's be like Paul. Let's live an opportunistic life, taking advantage of the opportunities that we have to share the gospel with those around us. Thinking about that passage that we read uh, about the things that we should not participate in, right? Get rid of those things and participate in the things that God wants you to do. That doesn't mean you can't have fun. How fun is it to see somebody come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ? What more joy could you experience than seeing someone taken from the very pit of hell and brought into the kingdom of God? The scripture says that when one person accepts Jesus Christ, the angels rejoice. That's reality, folks. The world's going to tell you that's not real. But it's real. Paul says, make the most of every opportunity. We're, we're given so many years to serve God on this earth. That scripture said 70 or 80. That means, man, I'm 51, right? Yeah, I'm 51. That means I only have 19 more years if I only live to 70. That's pretty short. Paul writes, we're to seize the opportunities, walk through the doors that God opens for us to share the gospel message. Do you pray that way? I do. Lord, open doors for me. Open the doors that need to be open. Close the doors that need to be closed. Give me wisdom and how to live and how to walk in your power and your strength and your wisdom. So as a church, let's do this. Let's ask God to give us a vision of 2021, what he wants us to do. Decisions that we can make as a, as a group on how to minister to those around us, our community, missionaries that we're going to support. We, there's a lot of decisions that we'll make in 2021 about our ministry. Let's pray, God, give us wisdom. The church is, is winning souls I love reading stories and, and things from our missionaries. Otto Kaiser writes us religiously and tells us about the number of souls that are being saved through global university. People in, in Muslim countries being saved. Is Islamic people coming to the Lord. I got a letter from Chris and Carrie Murdoch. I meant to share it with you this morning, but it was talking about what they're doing there. Chris and Carrie Murdoch, they minister in the same area that uh, Blake and uh, Michelle Collins, who was here with us recently, minister in the same part of the world. And many people are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ through their ministry. We are supporters, financially supporting, praying for those ministries. God is going to speak to our hearts. He's already spoken to me. He says, I need to increase my giving in, in missions. Personally, I'm going to do that. So listen to the Lord. And, and as, as a church, let's listen to His direction and as He gives us a vision of what we can do in this new year. We can expect God will give us opportunities as we go through this process, right? So let's take advantage of the opportunities to serve and grow God's kingdom in 2021. There's an old hymn that was written in the 1890s. I am resolved. I like to sing that around the first of the year, but we need to sing it all the time. The third verse of that song says, I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He is the living way. Not only do we need to live wisely, folks, and make the most of every opportunity. Finally, we need to live in God's will. Do what he willeth. Do his will. Verse 17 of our text says, Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Now, it's not always easy to discern the Lord's will. But 
as we get into the Word of God, as we abide in Christ, as we draw close to Him, it will be easier to, uh, to understand His will for our lives. Young people, you're making decisions about the vocations, what you're going to do in the future, right? What are you going to be when you grow up? You don't have to make that decision today, Liam. But you're going to be thinking about those decisions. God will give you wisdom. He'll, if you pray, Lord, give me wisdom. What do you want me to do in my life? He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to let you know what his will is. Don't act thoughtlessly. In other words, your mind is, is a powerful tool. God has given you this brain, this mind. And, and he, will, he will direct you and help you understand his will. So we are to live wisely and make the most of every opportunity. Did I lose power here again? It seems to be fading in and out. I don't know why. Maybe the battery's going down. Understand what God's will is. Live in God's will in 2021. How do we do that? Let me get this mic here. Andrew, just turn off that battery. Maybe going out. So how do we do that? we got to close here. It's about 12 o'clock. So how do you know God's will? I've got an answer to that. Back when the telegraph was the fastest method of long-distance communication, a man applied for a job as a Morse code operator. Nowadays, we instant message, we text, and that message goes completely. I used to, young people, they just had telephone wires, and they communicated by dots and dashes. Did you learn that in the military? Did you have to learn some Morse code? I think sometimes they did. Morse code is dots and dashes. And so is this coming through the main system? Is this coming out? They're good. So there was a man, he applied for a job for a, a telegraph communicator, Morse code operator. He answered the ad in the newspaper. He went to the address of the office that was listed. He arrived and entered a large, very busy office, and it was filled with other applicants. There was also a lot of noise and clatter going on in this, in this building, and there was all kinds of hustle and bustle happening. And the other applicants were sitting there, and he, it said there was a sign on the receptionist counter and instructed the job applicants to fill out a form and wait until they were summoned to enter the inner office. The young man filled out the form, and he sat down with seven other applicants in the waiting area that had already been there before he got there. After a few minutes, that young man stood up, crossed the room to the door of the, to the inner office, and walked right in. Naturally, the other applicants were looking at What's he, why is he going in that door? He's going to get thrown out. He just took it upon himself to walk back there. They didn't know what was going on. They muttered and they said he hadn't heard any summons yet. The instructions were to wait until you were summoned to come in. So they assumed that he would just be thrown out. Within a few minutes, however, the employer escorted the young man out of the office and said to the other applicants, Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming, but the job has just been filled. They couldn't figure it out. They were grumbling, wondering what was going on, and finally one got bold enough to say, wait a minute, this guy came in after we were here, and he had the audacity just to get up and walk back in there. Well, well that's not fair. The employer said, I'm sorry, but all the time you've been sitting here, the telegraph has been ticking out the following message in Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. None of you heard it or understood it. This young man did. The job is his. We live in a world that is filled with busyness and clatter and noise and distractions how are we going to know what God's will is in all this mess? we got to listen to Him. We have to listen to Him.
People are distracted and unable to hear the still, small voice that God speaks to them. What about you? Are you tuned into God's voice? Are you listening for His voice? We have to tune out all the clatter around us. God will speak to us through what Eddie sang about this morning, the Bible, our guide. He'll speak to us. If we'll get into it and read it, He's going to speak to us, the Bible. He also speaks to us through sermons. Let me put in a commercial. Come to church in 2021. If we can't meet in person, get online, right? Come to church as often as we can. Hebrews chapter 10 tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some are doing. And it goes on to say, especially as you see the day approaching. It's important. God speaks to us through sermons. He speaks to us through Sunday school lessons. I'll put in a commercial for Sunday school. Be in Sunday school if you can. I'm so glad Jonelle's starting the, the teen Sunday school class. God speaks to us. I remember learning in Sunday school things that when I was Liam and Caius' age back there in this very church. Sharon Green was my Sunday school teacher. I remember learning things through flannel graph. (laughs) We still have that. We learn through getting together and hearing His Word. We're going to learn in singing in the choir. We're going to sing songs about the Lord and we're going to learn through that. He's going to speak to our hearts. And hopefully he'll minister. Maybe everybody in the church may be singing. I don't know. Maybe nobody to sing to. But that's okay because we're going to be learning through that process. God speaks to us through music and praise. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit who resides in the believer's heart. He speaks to us when we're quiet and alone if we're listening to Him. When we tune out all the clutter of our life, when we put the cell phone down, when we close the laptop, when we turn off the Xbox, when we turn off the television, when we get into that that prayer closet, if you will, And seek the Lord. He will speak to us. But we've got to be listening. That telegraph operator got the job because he was tuned in. He was experienced to hearing the voice of the Lord. And you may say, well, I'm a a pretty new believer. I'm not that experienced. It doesn't matter if you're a believer. You've got what you need to hear the voice of the Lord if you'll just turn everything else off and listen. There was a Native American And he was with his friend in New York City. They had just gone there to visit. And they were in Times Square in Manhattan. And it was the the noon hour. Valerie and I went there a few years ago. We took Aaron up to play baseball when he was in college. First time we'd been to New York. That place was crazy. Not so crazy now. It's empty, right? They say it's kind of like a ghost town. But back then, man, cars, horns, uh, noises all over the place. Jackhammer, it's real. You hear it. And this Native American and his friend, they were in downtown New York City, and it was like that. It was crazy. Suddenly, the Native American said, I hear a cricket. His friend said, what? You hear a cricket? And all this is going on? How could you possibly hear a cricket? No, I'm sure of it, he said. I heard a cricket. His friend said, you're crazy. Native American listened for a moment. Then he walked across the street to a big cement planter where there were some shrubs growing. And he looked into the bushes and beneath its branches, and sure enough, he located a small cricket. His friend said, that's incredible. You must have superhuman ears. No. He says, my ears are no different from yours. It all depends on what you're listening for. No, his friend said, I could never hear a cricket in the bushes across the street in Manhattan. There's no way. The guy said, it just depends on what you're listening for. Let me show you. So he reached into his pocket, and he pulled out some coins, and he discreetly dropped them on the ground. And everybody in that area 
began to look down and wondered if it was their coins that dropped out. They heard it. Why? Because it was what they were listening for. We're talking about idols this morning in Sunday school. What are we looking to? What are we listening to? If you're tuned in to God, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can hear Him speak. So as we embrace 2021 and say goodbye to 2020, I want us to think, Lord, I want to be listening to you because I want to know your will. I want to live wisely. I want to take advantage of every opportunity that I can in 2021 to share the gospel with those who need it. And I can do this by listening to your voice. Will you stand with me? If you don't know Christ, then you can't hear him. You can't discern spiritual things. So I want to invite you to ask him into your life today. If you have never asked the Lord into your life, will you do that with me as we pray this prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. We've just celebrated Christmas. And Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and life and save me. I realize that I am a sinner. And you came to be the sacrifice for my sin. You died on the cross. You were born and, and you lived for 33 years and you died on the cross. Perfect and sinless. But you died for me. And I believe that today. I want you to become my Savior. I repent of my sin and ask you to come into my heart and life and lead me and guide me. I want to hear your voice from this day forward. If you pray that prayer and you, you sincere in all sincerity, God has saved you today. He'll bring you into new heights in 2021 into his will. He'll help you no matter what you face. He'll get you through it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for hearing our voice as we cry out to you. You're mindful of us. And Lord, I pray that we can hear your voice through all the avenues which you speak to us, through the power of your Holy Spirit working in us, through the Word of God, through sermons that we're going to hear in 2021, through Sunday school classes that we attend, Wednesday night studies, choir singing, reading in the Word at home, listening to uh, your voice as we're in prayer. Lord, speak to us in every way you can in 2021 because we want to abide in you and we want to bear much fruit in this new year. Lord, we commit to that this morning. That is what we want to do. And Lord, as we do that, help us to be a blessing to those around us. That fruit that we're producing it can be enjoyed by those around us. And Lord, I pray that you would work in people's hearts and lives. Help us direct us as a, as a body of believers, as our church. Help us to know what we need to do. To, to further the gospel message, to climb up on the mountaintops and proclaim your word. Help us to know what to do and direct us in this new year. We'll give you the glory and the praise. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thanks for being here and being part of the service. Remember uh, Wednesday night service, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Come out and be a part of those services if you can. We're going through uh, Answers in Genesis. We're in Lesson 75 or so, but uh, come out and be a part if you can be a part of that. And then Sunday school, we're gonna, Joan L's going to start that teen class. Is that next Sunday? Next Sunday we'll start that. Choir practice, that's again something new we'll be doing on Wednesday nights. We'll do that this Wednesday night after the service. So be, be a part of that if you can. Um, any other announcement I'm missing? Lord bless you. Everybody stay well. Praise God. Remember Kay? She's doing better. I talked to Jeff, or I texted him yesterday. She, she's uh, off of quarantine Tuesday or Wednesday, so I think she's doing better. Continue to pray for her and uh, her recovery. And everybody else that we know that's been suffering, a lot of people suffering from it. So lift them up. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed. <laughs>